I recently made some videos on hard drives and upgrading a PC. In this video, I'm going to talk about upgrading your laptop. Specifically, if it has one M.2 slot. I had a subscriber ask about the process. So I'm going to go through that as I think it's a good skill set for everybody to have. Welcome back to another video. My name is Nikos. Today we're talking about upgrading your NVMe drive in your laptop. You might be in a scenario where you want to just replace it, new fresh copy of Windows and off you go, or you might want to copy everything over because you might have some data on there and you just want to swap it in, swap it out. And the process to that will be covered in this video. I had a subscriber recently ask me what that process was, what's the best way to go about it. And that's where we're making this video. I'm going to show you my example of how I do it. And of course, I'll leave some links below of some other people that have done a good job at explaining the whole process. I will be using the Dell XPS 9570 to show you the process of this upgrade for you. Now, every laptop will be different on how to open it. I would suggest do a quick YouTube search, find a couple videos on how people have done it so that you don't uh, break any uh, clips or uh, have any scratches happening. Now, in my case, uh, with the XPS, there are two screws here. The are the Phillips uh, size, and then all the other screws have a different bit. That is a T5 bit. Now, what you want to do is look at these bits before you start opening or doing anything with your laptop. And, uh, you know, you don't want to have any issues, but to see the difference in these, uh, you would look at the size difference in the bits. And at that, you want to just ask yourself, hey, what do I want to be using? And go out and purchase one of these kits. They're only like about 20 bucks. This is the uh, Treco. Uh, version of 190 bits or something that I bought, uh, super cheap and super useful. You'll find a lot of use out of it. After you remove the screws and you do uh, remove the back plate on this laptop, every laptop, again, a little bit different. Uh, the MSI just had a whole bunch of these clips on the side and uh, it was so hard not to break them. I did break a few and if you do break too many of them, then you'll see that space and it will bother you a little bit there. Now, what you'll find in the laptop is there will always be an M.2 slot there'll be two rams of sticks and one might be soldered on one might be uh changeable and then a wi-fi card this wi-fi card I already made a video on it and uh, i've showed you how to replace that and do the whole antenna reconnecting so i will leave that link below now the ram's super easy to do you just pop this out and you are off to the races pop it back in and the hard drive as well you would just unscrew this hard drive and do the quick removal of it. Now, the uh, idea here is that I've already been playing around with this. This is the Western Digital Black uh, SN850 that I have here. It's a Gen 4 drive. Uh, and basically, you will see it clearly marks it in most cases. But what you want to think about here is that uh, when you're replacing one of these, you want to find, is it a Gen 3, Gen 4? In most cases, it will be a Gen 3 for laptops, especially the older ones. And you would just want to purchase a hard drive that will be good for uh, the replacement of your laptop. Now, why do I say it will be good for you? The idea here is when you're looking at the um, standard drives that come in, these are the SK uh, Hynix, and basically they are super slow drives. In the case of this Dell, it came with 500 gigabyte. Uh, you had an option for a terabyte, uh, I believe a two terabyte too, but uh, at the end of the day, they're super slow drives. This gets about 2,500 megabytes per second on the read and about 1,500 megabytes on the right, where if you go out and buy a Samsung 970 Evo here, this one takes you up to 3,500 megabytes per second on the read and about 25 to 2,800 megabytes per second on the right. Huge jump. So once you go for a huge jump like that, night and day, you'll see and notice the difference here. Will you get a difference in a faster drive? Uh, other than that, say you do have a 970 and you want to try Gen 4 and get the top speed of those. Uh, the, the idea here is that you won't because it's not going to take the uh, benefits of a Gen 4 drive since the system is not a Gen 4 drive. So you want to check out what generation it is. You want to check out what drive 
is available for you to purchase and then go with that. I highly suggest one of the 970 EVOs or equivalent that will get that top speed for you. I will be making a video of what the Gen 4 did in this laptop. Somebody asked me about it, so I'll be making just a quick video to show you the numbers that I got on that in case you're thinking, hey, uh, the uh, new Gen 4 drives are on sale. I know I'm going to be upgrading down the road. Should I just you know, spend the money if it's within 25 to 50 bucks? Why not? It makes no sense not to, but you're not going to get the benefits of it uh, that you're expecting to on a Gen 3 system. Now, once we've done this and we've replaced that, all we need to do is go ahead and put the cover back on. Before I do that, I want to explain something really quickly. And this is on the heat. People have asked me, well, what about the heat? Can I get a heat sink in here? You can't. Clearly, it is too thin. But if you have some thermal pads, that's what you, what you want to be doing. This is attached to the case. Uh, it heated on, but when it pressures, it's right against uh, this drive. If you can get a thermal pad underneath and one on top, this would be the go-to that you would want to be doing. I need to emphasize something on the warranty. If you are opening up your laptop and you are within the warranty period, please review the warranty. In the case of Dell, I can replace the hard drive, I can replace the RAM, I can replace the Wi-Fi chip, and they are just not covered if anything should happen to the laptop. However, something like the MSI, they actually have a label on there and they go, oh, void warranty if it goes, if, you know, if this is uh, uh, accessed. And basically, all of a sudden, you need to be looking at what are you able to change inside the laptop that will be covered or not covered by the warranty. So if you change your hard drive, for instance, and that corrupts something else, you know, why should they be responsible kind of thing? Uh, however, somebody like Dell, on the other hand, yeah, that's cool. Just replace it, have it ready, so you can ship it back. If anything were to happen, it's just not covering your new drive if something happens to that. Now, once we replace this case and we are good to go, what we want to do on a new Windows drive is just go onto Microsoft, download the onto a stick the um, uh, the files and the the executable. Run Windows on the boot, and off we go. Now you're to the races. New install. Download any software you need, and then you have no issues. It's fresh, clean install. Now, depending on the drive that you buy, you want to go get the data migration software. Most of the uh, drives do use the Sacronis software. If you bought a Samsung drive, they do have their own proprietary software. You would jump into Samsung Magician uh, a link, and I will leave this below, and you would go to the data migration, download the software, which I've already done, and then you would just simply install this so you can get it running. Now, what this will be doing is it will be analyzing the drive. It will be looking at the drive that you're hooking up to the system and you'll be just doing a clone of everything on that drive. The idea is very simple, uh, but you do need another tool. Now, this new tool would be this external case. Now, this external case allows you to put a hard drive into it. There is a card inside, it is a type C. I would recommend getting at least the 10 gigabit speed. I will leave the link below. I know there's uh, some out there that are 40 gigabits per, sec per second. It's a Lightning uh, 3, but I mean, they're a tad expensive this should run you around 40 50 bucks now all you do is install on the drive and you are off to the races now what you do want to do is a quick a refresh here and select the new drive that has been recognized again we are connected through usb type c you don't want to be touching it you don't want anything to occur and you select the new drive you click on the start button and it will give you a quick uh, notification that everything's going to be erased and some files might not be copied that are being used by the system but don't worry about it uh, it will be uh, doing its thing and it will be fine now uh, the idea here is that you're copying everything over and by copying everything over, you'll just be able to replace the drive once this is done. So depending on how much data you have on there. So if you just have Windows on there like I do right now, we only have about 44 gigabytes on here. And if you're looking at it from a perspective of having a whole bunch of data, it's going to take a little bit longer. Uh, do uh, be patient with it. You don't want to uh, disturb it and have any issues. Yeah, if you open up Task Manager really quick, you'll start seeing that both drives are starting to do something and this will get moving. Once this process is done, you're gonna remove it from the external case, throw it into your laptop, uh, put the cover on, do a test run before you put all the screws in, make sure it is operational and working and you are off to the races. And on top of that, you have an external device that you can be using. 
On that note, there is one thing I have to mention. If you do have an encryption on it, and most likely with Windows, you will have a BitLocker on there. You would want to go in there and just remove that BitLocker and get this transfer done and then re-enable it. If you do get an error, that is most likely the issue. Will you have other issues? Well, if you've been transferring them back and forth several times, you may have issue and you might need to then uh, do a, just a quick upgrade or an update to it to make sure it's more of a fresh copy or make a uh, previous session uh, restore point and then refresh uh, Windows or just do a fresh install it's the best way and just save your data and off you go on top of that just a note on that make sure you do a backup no matter what so if there are any issues you don't have any issues there if you do experience an issue with the error popping up the external device will now not be recognized so what you do want to do is go into the computer uh, go into the hard drive manager and re-enable the drive and then initiate it and then of course uh, format it so it can get going again because it will uh, go through the process and then the windows won't recognize it. A quick note on needing this external device. Do you really need one if you have other drives in the computer or another NVMe, another SSD? Well, no, you don't. So the 9500, for instance, the uh, Dell 9500, that has two NVMEs in there. And of course, other drives have the SSD in there. So, I mean, you could just clone to those, just move the data off, clone to that, replace the drive, the new drive, and then clone back and you're good to go. Now, it might not work always with the SSD. I've noticed some issues there with some people complaining about the transfer over, but with an NVMe, you shouldn't have an issue. It's worth giving it a try before dropping 50 bucks if you don't wanna spend that money. Uh, the idea now. And what I really wanna bring up on this, because people have asked me these questions, why would I want to uh, do this process or why do I need to know this process? If you're just a regular consumer, it really comes back to the beginning of the video where I just said, hey, you want something that's faster, more efficient, quicker, and it saves you money by getting something that's uh, less on the original purchase, so 500 gigabytes, and then going and getting a one terabyte or two terabytes uh, on there. Same with the RAM, same with the Wi-Fi card if it doesn't come with a Wi-Fi 6 card. If you're a creator or if you're somebody that is in business or you're doing some important work, well, the the, the drives are uh, are better, period. The, you're going to have more security with it. You're going to feel better about having a good drive in there. And it's the drive that is going to be your workhorse. If anything should happen, then you can remove this drive and you can re-put in the crappy drive that comes with these and off you go for the warranty support. Now you have all your data secure on the drive, you can remove it and keep working on another computer. This is very, very critical and it's something that people don't often think about. I have warranty on this, I have drops and spills, but the warranty, very critical that you go check it out. What is the warranty on your system? Now mine, I got the drop and spill because I take it places, of all the shoots, and I mean, uh, it, it, falling into water, you know, by the river, over a bridge, trying to take a picture is highly likely, especially when you forget you have the backpack that isn't waterproof. And then you go, oh, now what? It's a random example, right? But you could spill something, you can do whatever with it, or you just have a corruption on the drive. We need to be able to have all our data and we need to be able to move efficiently. And sometimes the work on the actual computer to fix it may take a while. It might be that they don't even have parts. During the whole lockdown, I had an issue with the other laptop and it, it, like I went to Canada Computers, which is a local store here that is uh, you know, big across you know, Canada. And they're like, oh, it's two months for us to send it out, get it checked, and then tell you what the parts are gonna be, and if we can get them, bring it back. And then you're gonna be like, okay, so if your hard drive stuck in there with the stuff, the data that you need, the good stuff, whew, you're in trouble. So having this opportunity to be able to switch back in the old drive and send it off, that's critical. And on top of that, they're not gonna warranty the new drives, they're gonna warranty the stuff that came with the computer, same with the RAM, same with anything else that you change something to really think about, something to be really conscious about. At the same time, this idea of having external devices. Now I have, like, because I've bought so many computers over the years, I have several of these crappy drives. And like, they're a dime a dozen for me that I use as external devices. So you can go get a Samsung T5, the external device, I think it's like four or five terabytes, there's a whole bunch of them. They're 
kind of pricey. And with a $50, $60, um, and that's Canadian, so you get these for like $30, $40 in the States, uh, external device, and the drive that comes out of here, now you got a NVMe drive that's going to be running around 1,000 megabytes per second transfer through the USB, and you're off to the races. Like, it, there is the opportunity there, and how do we use it? Well, I have these lying around. If I'm doing a shoot with somebody and they need to edit and we don't have time, it's a quick turnaround, I just give them the drive that I've copied everything over. I then go come back to the studio and upload everything. Once it's synced with Google and they've synced it to the computer, then they stop using the files on this. They give this back to me and they just start using everything off the Google Drive. Uh, and this is the process that we have with our uh, work that we do. Now, the uh, last thing I do want to mention about this whole process, you want to think about this in terms of now in the future. And I know people are going to be asking me this, and I did mention this earlier in the video. What is the future of your lifeline with the computer that you have, the device that you have. You want to ask this to yourself and say to yourself, what do I really need when I'm spending the money? Because that's what it's going to be if you don't think about this. We want to think investment-wise. And investment-wise would be what drive I'm going to be using down the road. Now, the 970 Evo has been a workhorse for me for a while, and it's still one of the best drives. There's a 980 right now, not the 980 Pro, 980. And you, you sit there and you go, hey, would that be a better upgrade because it's better cash on that? It, would that be worth it? It is more expensive. So, you know, you sit there and you go, okay, is it worth the money? And is Gen 4 worth the money? I will be making that video regarding the Gen 4, Gen 3 in a laptop like this, the results I got. And this was the whole point of me even doing all this stuff is these questions I've been getting that I'm like, hmm, let me think about that. And then let me test it just to confirm before I talk about it. So the uh, the thought process would then be if it is within line and it's it's a, it's a movement for you for that idea of future-wise and what is the long-term use case scenario for you. And at that, what are you buying in the next uh, roundup of laptops? So I know that this laptop I'm going to keep for another year or so. And then the question becomes, well, Gen 4 is coming out after that. AMD chips are going in these laptops. And they're, you know, I, I know that my next laptop is going to have a Gen 4. So would it be of interest to me if I find that on sale? to put a Gen 4 in here, will that help me overall? That's the process I want to take, that's the process I want to think about when I'm looking at laptops, when I'm looking at the upgradability of what exists out there. And that's, that's the number one thing you got to be remembering when you're looking at purchasing anything because the idea is that you're moving forward every year with new technology. And like I bought this laptop and I, it was amazing, the next year something better came out and I'm like, mm, that's okay. But then the following year, you're like, whoa, that was just a huge upgrade. And now we're going into the next round of big upgrades and the new computers are just phenomenal. And that 64 gigabytes that I want for RAM is now becoming a new norm. And that new norm is what I wanna be thinking about and looking at as the next upgrade for me and making sure that, hey, if I do buy a computer there, what RAM can I use? I know I'm not gonna be able to use the RAM kit that I have in here. Um, I'm gonna have to buy a new RAM kit, but can I sell this RAM kit? Yeah, I can. Can I sell this for the whole laptop? Yeah, I can. So thoughts on this. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, discrepancies, throw the comment below. And of course, check out these video up top and leave a like to help out with the algorithm because I'd appreciate it.